the most important thing if you're going to look at the sign got to have a solar filter you need to, a good one this is glass you can see it looks like a mirror and I can actually hold this in front of my face and look right up at the sun and it doesn't hurt at all I can see the disk of the sun it's like looking at the moon I wouldn't of course dare do that without it and you never ever do it with your telescope without the filter on there so it's extremely important to make sure of course you've got it on you want it to be on really secure you want to make sure that it does not come off period because if it does for starters it'd mess up your telescope and if you're looking through it it's going to mess you up it'll burn your eyes up and one of the challenging things is actually finding the sun in your telescope to get it centered you can't use a regular finder scope like you would with uh, looking at the moon or the stars or planets because the sun's too bright. Now you could put a solar filter over it but what's still hard is you have to look up face your face towards the sun and open an eye and it, it ain't easy. It hurts. Well I've found a little trick with this Now I've already got the telescope polar aligned and I've polar aligned it at night before and when I did, I marked on my driveway quick reference dots. They are, what I did was put just pieces of duct tape around all four sides of each leg. So after I did the duct tape around each tripod leg, just tape on all four sides of each leg at the base, I uh, moved the tripod and then I just put a little dot of black paint on the concrete and removed the duct tape and I've got quick reference dots so now since I have the telescope polar aligned I can cheat I uh, don't even have a finder scope on here this thing it's a 10 inch Schmidt Cassegrain and it's 2540 millimeters focal length which means it's got a really small area of the sky it's looking at that makes it hard to find stuff but I've got a two inch diagonal which is going to help me a bunch since I have this two inch diagonal that gives me a really big window to look in my lowest eyepiece power which is a 60 millimeter eyepiece is about 42 power so that's not bad for this telescope because usually everything's high power and I'm gonna do is I referenced my star charts in this case Cartier du Ciel it's a freeware program and it told me that the declination for the Sun today is plus 14 degrees so I'm going to set my setting circle for the declination on plus 14 and then all I got to do is sweep it east and west until I see the bright light come into here and I'll have the solar filter on so it won't hurt my eyes I'll just see light coming in you can do the same thing with the moon it makes it easy to find the moon so now I'll set my setting circle at about plus 14 so now my north-south adjustment is pretty well set so all I've got to do is move the telescope east and west and I should be able to get the Sun to come into my eyepiece barrel okay so now my north and south setting this way should be set because I've got it at plus 14 because that's what my map told me so now all I've got to do is go east and west until I can see it the Sun inside the barrel and I don't have an eyepiece in here this gives me a wider field of view and I don't even have to worry about focus all I'm gonna see is a circle And it probably helps to do it without sunglasses on. That was my first little mistake. First I thought, well, it's because I have my sunglasses on. That might have made a problem. But also, it's a partly cloudy day, and the sun went behind a cloud. So i got to wait a minute, and we'll get it. Okay, I'll see if I can get this to show on the video. I'm looking down the eyepiece barrel. Yeah. 
can see a reflection in there. See the light coming in the barrel? You got there's no eyepiece, but it's in there. It took a couple minutes, but uh, I had to make sure the sun wasn't behind cloud. And I had to get smart and plug in the electrical too because the motor's not running, the sun kept moving, that makes it kind of hard. And I originally tried to use my 60 millimeter two-inch diameter eyepiece, which was actually such a low power that it wasn't cooperating at all. I was seeing the central obstruction, the secondary mirror, so I switched to a 55 millimeter eyepiece, which is also a two-inch diameter. And the sun, the entire disc just fits in there. So that's good enough to get it centered up in there and look at a uh, big sunspots. I didn't see any sunspots today. Maybe at a higher power if there was any there I might have found some. It's kind of like looking at craters on the moon. Uh, the sunspots are usually pretty small so you have to find them and then use a little higher power to get close enough to actually kind of view them. Uh, see, One of the reasons I was testing this because I was wanting to use this for the 2017 eclipse of the sun and uh, cause I'm planning to be on the center line that day and uh, <coughs> this I think I'll be able to use it just to show the phases of the eclipse but I won't be able to get a wide enough view to get all the corona and stuff coming around the sun so during totality it won't be worth much but at that point I'm just going to be wanting to look around and enjoy the atmosphere I'm glad I really, you know, went ahead and did a dry run with this. I wanted to do it and test out to see if I could use one of my digital cameras afocally. Uh, the idea for doing it afocally is you would actually have your eye, the sun centered up in the eyepiece in focus. And with this adapter, with this particular lens, I could actually screw it onto the camera lens just like I would a filter. And then that way it's parallel to the lens and it's centered. And I would just set the camera focus on infinity. And then I would zoom in and out with my uh, zoom control. Because at the wider angle you'd see a great big circle in the center of your field of view. And then I'd zoom in so that I'd get rid of that vignetting. But I don't think I'm going to be able to do it with this particular lens, even though it'll thread on, just because I don't think I'm going to be able to get a good image. But I've got one of these little handy handy holders. I got this one's a Celestron one that I paid about 25 bucks for. And I can mount the camera on here and then an eyepiece too and have it clamped down to hold the eyepiece and then try to get it lined up good. And I think I can do that. It's just going to be a little trickier than having one that threads right into the camera. So for using this adapter, I'm going to have to screw it in to the camera tripod holder just like normal. And then I adjust this part that holds the lens up and down and also left and right so that I can get it it's actually got an adjustment screw it's got a little knurled knob here and a threaded screw here and it'll move it up and down and then this here will tighten it up to hold it into place and then this one here will tighten up you put the eyepiece barrel on and everything and this is kind of tricky because see I'm going to be zooming the lens in and out to the eyepiece and that's going to change the distance between uh, these two. So I've got this basically on here. I don't have it all set up perfect. I know that from previous experience that this particular camera which is a Minolta Dimage 5 if I set the focal length at approximately 105 millimeters that's about the right amount of zoom in and out to get the image so that you don't have a big circle of the eyepiece in the middle of your 
viewfinder and I've got it clamped on at the bottom here just like a tripod socket and then I've adjusted this away to get it centered up and also this axis and then I clamped this piece here down on the eyepiece itself and also the, uh, the barrel of the lens a little bit and hopefully that holds them together parallel and I can get an image. Well after doing my dry run I decided that I am not going to try to do this through my 10 inch SCT for a solar eclipse. Uh, there's just too much magnification on that thing. If I had a lower powered telescope, if it was a 1200 millimeter, I might be able to get away with it. It'd be a lot better if it was a lot shorter focal length. Because I had to put this thing for that 55 millimeter eyepiece pretty close to uh, the widest angle I could get. And that just wasn't working at all. Then I was getting my central obstruction from the secondary mirror showing again it just looked horrible so I'm glad I didn't waste that time on solar eclipse day I could still use this visually with the 55 millimeter eyepiece and look at the eclipse through the phases of it and then at totality I'll just do like everybody else and set up this video camera I'm using right now just to kind of video the scene and record you know how everybody's talking about it